All right, you ready? Yep. Okay, look. Here we go. Hi, I'm Nick Meisner. And I'm Lisa, his wife. <laughs> and we want to welcome you back to the Ready Life podcast, where you'll learn how to make your home and family as independent as possible for your basic necessities of life. You know, things like water, heat, food, and the power that most of us depend on for these things to some extent. Today, we're going to be talking about a pretty messy subject. <laughs> well, I got to say, it's actually Nathan's favorite subject. If only he were here. <laughs> this <laughs> well, is true. He may have. I think I just heard him come in. Yeah. But his favorite topic is mud. That's right. Mud, mud, and more of it. In fact, his birthday is coming up. And you know what he wanted to do for his birthday? Mud. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to find some creative ways to make mud pies and go for some mud all kinds of, I don't know, fun things anyway. That's right. Yes. But mud is something that we are not lacking in. And <laughs> I I mean, I, I think of the the day that Nathan was born, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about mud. That was like, I don't know, what was that, two feet of mud or something? Well, that might be exaggerating okay. a little bit. But it was... Foot and a half. It was a good foot, maybe foot and a half of mud. And since then, the Forest Service graveled the road, and so it was better for a number of years. But before that gravel, it was it was bad every spring, and that year was exceptional. And I remember chaining up all four wheels on the truck, and we were supposed to have a home delivery, yeah. <laughs> except the midwife couldn't get in here because of the mud. <laughs> and Lisa was going into labor, and we had supplies that we had to get out because we were going to have to go to a friend's home. And um, I knew I had to get that truck out. And so I did something that is not usually thought to be a good idea. And I chained up the truck, or I left the chains on from the wintertime. And that's a, usually a bad idea in mud because if you start spinning out, Boom, you can dig your way to China just like that with chains <laughs> on. But I I figured if I keep my momentum going and just fly through it, maybe just maybe I'll make it because I didn't think I'd make it without. So, yeah, I was broad sliding down the road, flying <laughs> around the corners and with a wing and a prayer, I made it. But that was the story of our road for yeah. years, many, for decades and then, they, like I said, they did gravel it, and it got better for a while, but now it's deteriorating, and we're back into entering mud. back into the, <laughs> the mud ages. And um, it illustrate, but it, it was just making us think, you know, we're in, we're entering into mud season yet again. And yes. uh, well, we think we are, and then we aren't, and then we think we are, and then yeah. we are, and then we're not. It changes so its mind. It's it's one of those springs where mud season started like end of January this year for it's us. Weird. It was really weird. weird. It was yeah. like raining, and we started getting all the mud and everything, and kids were super excited. And then it snowed on the ruts and froze them. So now we've got deep ruts. Yep. And mud underneath, but. We've, snow on top so it's a bit of a mix <laughs> yeah we've been driving the quad in and out um f for quite a few times every now and then it gets good enough where we think we can get Freezes the solid car enough. In. yeah <laughs> and so it's been an interesting spring but it, it just made us think about the some of the physical access issues we knew what we were getting into with this place and we were okay with that but we also know that there's a lot of folks that didn't know what they were getting into. And mm -hmm. so we thought we'd chat about this a little bit with y'all and um, just 
to bring up some things so that you know what you're getting into if you happen to be in the process of relocating, looking for a new place, something like that. And if you are already where you're going to be, maybe something that we share here will be helpful to you in improving your access situation. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's interesting. Thinking of this whole access thing reminds me of a phone call I got. It was like at the peak of COVID and everybody was frantically moving out of the cities into the country. And I got this phone call from this lady. She was wanting to move out into the country. And um, there was, especially up in our area, property was going like hot potatoes. And people were buying property sight unseen. Like they were just grabbing them up as fast as they could. I think that was happening all (laughs) over the place. Probably. Yeah. Anyway. So she calls me and she's like wanting to wanting to get my ideas for her specific place. And so she gave me all the details that she had. Of course, this was sight unseen. And um, she was telling me, all, I mean, it was it sounded like a pretty decent place. And then there was something that she said sort of in passing that she mentioned the realtor had sort of mentioned in passing. And it was that... Um, to, to purchase this property, you really needed to have a four-wheel drive. <laughs> and I was like, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up. <laughs> what was that bit that the, you know, the realtor said about having a four-wheel drive? She said, well, yeah. I'm like, is that for year-round access? And she said, yeah. I'm like, hmm, okay, this smells like trouble to me. <laughs> when the realtor says you need a four-wheel drive, you better look out. Yeah. <laughs> Ziplum needs a four-wheel drive. <laughs> and so I told her, I said, because, you know, she's from the city, and I said, okay, here's the deal. And I just kind of gave her the lowdown on what bad access issues are like. And, you know, that this, this could be a major issue. And I told her, if you're going to buy this property, you really have to go look at it because this driveway could be a terror or a nightmare, something that could, you know, make your experience in country living a very bad one. And so if you don't plan ahead and know what you're getting into before you get into it. And so she didn't. She ended up um, getting something else and uh, moving on because there were so many other bidders that (laughs) <laughs> anyway, they couldn't go see the property because it was snowed in at the time. Right. So, But it's not like it's across the board where in a given part of the country, everything's going to be muddy or everything's going to be good. Yeah. My experience has been that it varies quite a bit. And even in fairly close proximity, you can have one road that is a really rocky road and they don't have any mud issues. Mm -hmm. And then there can be another road that just has terrible mud, a foot or two of it. And so it's, it's hard to know. But one thing I will say is that um, if you see a pullout area, (laughs) a parking, (laughs) little parking area at the end of a gravel road or dirt road where it's connecting to a a county or state maintained road, Mm -hmm. that is probably an indicator that that (laughs) there's a reason why that parking lot is there. When I say parking lot, I'm just talking, you know, an area where you see bare ground and you Mm -hmm. can tell that people park there. There's probably a reason (laughs) why that happens. In our (laughs) neck of the woods, at least, that happens because people are parking there either during the winter because they get a boatload of snow and nobody plows the road, or they park there during the springtime when we're mud is in, so bad. when the mud is so bad. We call it spring breakup. I I just do it without even thinking. But I've I've noticed a few quizzical faces when I've said that in other parts of the country. <laughs> spring, what is this? Spring is this something to do with school? <laughs> spring break or something breaking up or something? No, it's yeah. called mud. Yeah, we just call it mud. That's right, mud season. <laughs> That's right. But, And and not every, you know, obviously that's kind of a northern thing where the ground has frozen during the winter and then it thaws out and it's extra bad. But everywhere, other than maybe the desert, can have a certain amount of mud. I remember you talking about mud down in Georgia. Red Georgia clay. Yeah, there you go. Oh, (laughs) man, that stuff, you wouldn't necessarily sink way into it, but it was slick as greased lightning. And you could get stuck so fast in that stuff, and it was so sticky, it would just stick to your tires. And before long, you'd have inches of mud just caked all the way around your tire. So, yeah, mud is a kind of a universal thing. 
other than maybe the desert, and you can get stuck in the sand. So yep, there, there you, you go. go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyhow, the, the all that to say that's one thing I would look out for. And another thing is if you see signs of ruts during the summertime. Oh yeah. Because I mean, obviously, the best time to do to look at at this for from a transportation side of things is during whatever the muddy season is in that part of the country. Worst time of the year for that road. If it's a really rainy time or if it's, you know, up north and springtime, uh, that would be the ideal time. But if you happen to be there during a time when it's not that way, you can uh, sometimes tell, unless the road has been graded, you can see the signs of ruts. And over time, the, the sharpness of the ruts will wear down and the low parts will fill in and the high parts will get knocked down. But you can still kind of see, see those ruts in there. And that can be an indicator as well. Obviously, unless it's been graded, then there's yeah. no telling. But those are a couple of things. Obviously, you can talk to neighbors, but you just have to take what neighbors say with a grain of salt because it kind of depends on whether they like you and want you around or whether they... <laughs> They're trying to scare you away. <laughs> yeah, whether you're a furner and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want any furners around. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Anyhow. Um, so some of some... the challenges that you might face for, with a property that has bad access. Well, we've already talked about snow, but we haven't talked about snow removal. Hmm. Uh, that can be... Uh, a, ch- a bad access issue. Um, for us, we have three miles of Forest Service Road. And I remember when we were newlyweds and we moved in here, nobody plowed the three miles. Like they would just, I don't know, spin it as far as they could. There was one guy I remember when we first moved back in here, he had a winch on his truck. And mind you, you could put chains on your tires and that would help. But no, the locals wouldn't put chains on their tires. Instead, chains would, are for wimps. They, <laughs> he would winch himself all the way into his property. And I just remember thinking, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like, just put some chains on your tires. But anyway, snow, snow, is a, snow can be a challenge. So we ended up buying a little back plow i remember at the very beginning we were we were kind of short on funds and so we bought a, that little back plow and you'd have to drive over the snow first and then drag the plow and try and plow it off the road if the price looks but, too good to be true it probably is it probably is so yeah just take my word for it back plows don't work unless you're using it <laughs> in tandem with a front plow and using it in that way sometimes you'll see it on commercial trucks that are plowing but yeah, back plow by itself, I can't tell you how many times I dug myself out of the ditch <laughs> yes. with that thing. It was crazy. <laughs> but, um, but three miles. We plowed three miles for many, many years right. all by ourselves. And now we've got some neighbors that have moved in that are helping with plowing yeah. some in the winter, which is nice. We got a good plow years ago, and uh, it's a front plow. Ours is a Henniker, and we're really happy with it. It, it looks a lot like the very popular Boss plows that you'll see and they're they're good but they're really expensive bosses really really expensive so henniker is kind of like a i don't want to say economy because they're really sturdy but it's a lower priced it doesn't like a mid between the cheap junk and the really like top quality i think it's just as good quality it just doesn't have the name recognition of boss Hmm. But it is a least, good plow. That's my take on it. I mean, we've even had a big tree fall on the thing, and it's yeah, still true. going. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's been good. But there's other good plows out there. You know, Western makes some some good ones too. And I will say a um, a neighbor of ours who used to work for years on the hydraulic pumps in the plows. He told me that the uh, pumps on the Meyer plows mm. were just terrible. That was, that was most of what he worked on. And um, so anyhow, a little little bit of good info there. But I will say one thing that, that I would uh, caution you about is a favorite saying of realtors is, oh, a neighbor plows this road. Oh, yes. Favorite oh, saying. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so what you need to know is you need to know where is the near how how far to the nearest county maintained road because that's the only sure thing that you've got. Mm-hmm. If the county maintains it, then you know that 
it's going to be plowed and kept open. And everything between here and there is up for grabs. Yep. Who knows? The neighbor if, may, may or may not plow. They may or may not plow. They may Their Ooh. plow may break. Their truck may break. They may move. They may just decide to stop <laughs> plowing. We've had friends that that happened to. The neighbor had been plowing it for 20 years. And after they moved in, he said, I've been plowing this road long enough. Now it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't have any snow removal equipment. and Because uh, the realtor had said, a neighbor plows it. So. Yeah. So anyhow, it's it's one of those things that, that you want to be prepared for what would happen yeah. if the neighbor doesn't plow that. And so there's there are uh, options for like going on top of the snow. And uh, if you wanted to, we, we have friends that do that, snowmobile or... Snowcat, tried mm -hmm. a snowcat for a while. That was slow. So yeah. the latest iteration has been a um, SUV with tracks on it. And I think that's worked out pretty well for them. Yeah. But we, other friends that have done snowmobiles for years and, um, you know, it's, it's up to you. So that's an option as well. Personally, I like being able to drive in all winter. It's, it's a lot more comfortable and... Yeah, it's it's nice if you can keep your road open. So, uh, but there are options just just to think about. But that's yeah. a little bit about snow. But you and, know, while oh, we're oh, one other thing I okay. I wanted to mention real quick is in our neck of the woods. I I can't speak to other areas, but I I would think that a similar phenomenon exists. But there's kind of a a, a line of demarcation where when you get above a certain altitude, it's like it just dumps feet of snow. And the difference is quite marked. And so in our neck of the woods, that's like 3,000 feet. Anything close to 3,000 feet or above, it's going to get a ton of snow. If you're below that, you may not get as much. Yes, there are some snow belts here and there where you could get a, a good bit even at a lower altitude. But that's kind of a sure thing. You see higher altitude property, and you're going to start seeing those listings called seasonal access. That's <laughs> yes. the, the buzzword for means that the, the either the road is really bad or tons of snow or tons of mud or all of the above. So while we're talking about snow, why don't we talk about narrow roads? Because mm. I think narrow roads, the biggest downside to them would be the snow removal. Um, yeah, that's true because you don't really have anywhere to push the snow. Exactly. And so that can, unless you can create a really good place to push the snow or widen the road up, then you're going to eliminate one of your options for snow removal, which is plowing. Yeah. You know, plowing, you can do it a variety of ways on a truck, on a on a four-wheeler, on a side-by-side, -side, on a tractor, but it all involves pushing the snow somewhere. And the berms build up, and once they build up to a certain point, they start moving in. And so you have to start really, really wide. When I start plowing our road in the winter, mm -hmm. I, it looks almost like an interstate when I start out. Yeah. And by the end of the winter, on a normal winter, it's starting to close in on us by the end of the winter. Yeah, at the very beginning, I know we can pass, you know, pass cars. Two abreast. Two abreast. But mm -hmm. by the end of the winter you're usually finding the closest pull out to pull out so that way the other person can get past. That's right. So, so on a skinny road, it, you're kind of eliminating that unless you can make it wider. And that basically leaves you with blowing snow mm -hmm. as an option, a snow blower. And mm -hmm. when I say a snow blower, I'm not talking about a little walk behind blower unless you have an exceptionally short driveway. I'm talking about something that is going to mount to a vehicle most of the time it's going to mount to a tractor. That's what you typically see. Could be, you know, it depends on the size of your tractor, but it could be a five foot wide blower, six foot wide, something along those lines. And there are some blowers I've seen that will mount on a side by side and uses like a, a winch on the front mm -hmm. to pick it up and let mm -hmm. it down. And it'll have its own little motor that's attached to the blower that operates it. So that could be an option as well. But with your tractor mounted blowers, they're generally going to run off of the power takeoff, the PTO on the tractor. If you go that route, um, it's really, really convenient if you can find a tractor with a front PTO so <laughs> that you don't end up with a crook in your neck. A kink in your <laughs> neck. No, you wouldn't be like blowing. speaking from experience oh, or anything. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. Not, not even several years <laughs> of experience. No. <laughs> How many years did you live on that narrow driveway? Uh, Blowing let's see. Probably, backwards. <laughs> I blew snow for 
probably, I don't know, it was five or 10 years, something like that. Yeah. So also snow blowing is slow. So that was one reason I didn't even consider it too much on our road because we have three miles. Yeah. And I would have spent the better part of a day every time we had to blow the road. With plowing, I can cruise along at 20 miles an hour and have it plowed in, you know, a couple hours or less, mm-hmm. hour and a half maybe. Yeah. So, anyhow, enough about snow. We're just about done with snow. We're I know. almost out of the winter. Finally. I don't well, want to talk about this stuff anymore. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, but then that means once this, the, yeah. Mud. Mud. Yeah. Back to Nathan's favorite subject. That's right. <laughs> so some roads are, are rocky, you know, like we mentioned, and yep. don't have a lot of mud, but some of them are a nightmare. Uh, one thing that we've noticed is that in areas where there's been heavy logging on both sides of the road, mm. that seems to be where the road gets really, really bad for mud. Mm. And I'm not sure what it is, if it has to do with just the fact that they had a bunch of heavy equipment tearing the road up there, or if it has to do with the trees being gone and the roots. Drinking up the water, or I don't know. I don't know, but for Something. some reason, <laughs> I have observed that. I don't know if y'all have comment in the in the comments if you've observed that also, but that's been my observation. We call ours the clear cut, and that's usually where the mud is the worst, yeah. in the clear cut. That's right. The the <laughs> Forest Service and their <laughs> infinite wisdom was seeing to the health of the forest by clear cutting it. And, uh, it's still a clear cut. <laughs> yeah. And don't take me wrong. I, I I agree with logging as long as it's done well. Responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, um, yeah, I think we've talked enough about mud. We Ruts, you know, um, mm-hmm. that could be a telltale giveaway. Um, gravel can make a difference, but the road can swallow it up. We've experienced that many times. Many other folks have. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you know, you can put a a bunch of nice gravel on it. And if there's enough mud there, within a couple years, it can just swallow it right up. And um, so don't despair. At some some point in time, you're going to reach the bottom and (laughs) it'll get better. (laughs) (laughs) So the next thing for bad access would be rocky roads, which and with rocky roads, you're not going to deal with the mud as much isn't that an ice cream flavor but, rocky road i think i remember it from when i, I was a kid know. baskin robbins know. maybe yeah. so rocky road rocky road <laughs> hmm. i'm gonna have to look that up now uh yeah so but you have a story about rocky roads oh my yeah <laughs> so i remember when i first moved out here um it was a little wet behind the ears i'm from michigan originally so it's all flat land. Um, you know, you have a tiny little rise and everybody says, oh, look, there's a mountain. <laughs> like, Anyway, I remember I was I was seven, I think, when I first saw my first mountain and I was in love. I was like, OK, someday I'm going to live in the mountains. So when I finally moved out here, um, I was with a friend and we were uh, we were over uh, in Sandpoint and we heard that there was a road that cut across the mountains over to East Side Road. And you were in on a... On the other side. What year was it? Ni- 19... Something. Something Chevy Lumina, Yes, right? yes. I... <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> I was like, well, hey, I like back roads, you know, let's let's go find this thing. So we're, we get on the road and we start trekking up into the mountains and the road got rockier and it got rockier and I'm an adventurous person I mean you know like hey I'm not scared of a couple rocks and okay we'll just so my friend gets out of the car and finally she's like okay turn to the right turn to the right to the right okay okay go go Three inches. Yep, yep. Oh, okay. Now, now turn hard to the left. Hard to the left. This, <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> this sounds like the jeeping videos where they're on the it's Rubicon totally, or something. <laughs> I remember at one point we both got out of the car and we looked at the car and it was like you know we're just sitting <laughs> cockeyed on like two different large boulders in the in the road. Like, yeah, this is a rocky road. I think we need to turn around. <laughs> Turn around. So then we spent the next hour trying to back out of this like obstacle course that we'd gone in with my my poor little car. <laughs> so yeah, rocky roads. 
Um, which is why when that lady was telling me that, oh, yeah, you need a four-wheel drive to get in, like, oh, no, 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 no. You need to go look at this road before you buy it because when she says you need, you might be needing, like, a Jeep with a lift kit on it to, to get to this property, like, that's, you know, if if the property was up that road that, that my friend and I were going up, then, yeah, you would need something like that. Um so yeah, rocky roads, they can be a blessing. Yeah. Because you don't have mud, but they can also be a curse depending on how bad the rocky road is. Right. So And so we've been talking about these kind of roads. What kind of vehicle would we be looking for if you had to deal with something like that? So I think our road is probably one of the worst that I've seen for that at least pre-gravel. Since gravel then it's no longer, I think we lost the title. The um, worst. Yeah, I think we lost road. the title of the worst mud road <laughs> after they graveled it. We may win it back in another 10 or 15 years, but um, for the present, we did lose it. But I, I'm just thinking about the vehicles that I remember would actually be able to make it through during those, when, when we were in the, the really when we bad. had the crown, the crown title. <laughs> and it was uh, usually the, the jacked up, pickup trucks with big tires because yep. they had lots of clearance to deal with the ruts. And really, that's that's what we've found with mud is that more often than not, it's more of a ruts issue than a traction issue even. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can certainly get yourself stuck from traction, but if you navigate it right and all of that, it's often going to be that you bottomed out and uh, because your your tire fell in a deep rut or something like that. So. Um, something with high clearance is going to be helpful. Bigger tires that can help with that. Putting a lift on. Yeah. Our pastor was just telling us about his. <laughs> he lives down a really, really muddy road, and he was so excited he got a. He didn't even know you could put a two-inch lift on a Subaru, and <laughs> they put a two-inch lift on there, and he said you can't believe the difference it made. So you know, there's things like this that you can do, and um, it's exciting. It, it it's you might be listening to this and thinking. That does not sound like me. And that's that's fine. You can find lots and lots and lots of country places that have really good access yep. and are just off of a county-maintained road or have a good gravel base and don't have issues. So it's it's not like it's, it's like this everywhere. It's just that when you find a place like this, you've got a special treasure. That's and, right. <laughs> <laughs> and We have a treasure. <laughs> and it can... Uh, greatly reduce the value of the place. It can reduce yeah. the price, which I think that's one reason that we were able to get the the price that we did on our place and, and all the other, you know, all the properties in our little area here, same thing. It's mm -hmm. a kind of a depressed area and other places where the access is bad, you see the same thing because yep. it's not as valuable from a marketable standpoint. And so that could be a pro or a con for you. The mud can be a curse or a blessing and, and mm -hmm. the snow and all of that just depends upon your situation. And I mean, I've, I've heard of folks that they purposely did not do snow removal on their road and they would get upset at anyone who did do snow removal on their road because they wanted it that way it because was difficult to access. it was difficult to access. So that if that floats your boat, that's, that's great. You know, you can find that. It's totally findable. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mm. So a couple other um, access challenges that you might run into if you're looking at properties um, would be steep roads, for example. Steep hill. Or mm. like, a, yeah, either a steep hill, the, the road is on a steep hill, which is going to be more challenging in mud or in snow and ice. Um, or I was thinking of like just over the mountain from us, that lovely little cliffhanger. Mm. Like it's, it's you know, the road goes uphill, but this like straight down. I don't see the steep but, roads usually being a mud issue because when they're steep, they usually drain pretty well. Mm. It's the flat places where the water just sits and soaks into the ground. That's usually where you see the mud issues. Yeah, but, except your folks place that hill, right? Of their yeah, that's true. There, but that's the shady spot. But that's true. It, it there is a, a place where it. Um, Love riding. There's in the a ranger. spring. There's a spring <laughs> under the road right there, 
and mm. it runs. It does dry up in the summertime, but it runs in the spring, and it just adds, dumps a whole bunch of extra <laughs> moisture there and makes it extra juicy. So, uh, yes, I, you're right. It is certainly possible, but I think in general, in general, a it's... hill isn't going to be quite as much of a mud issue, but could be more of a traction issue in the winter time if you're in the north. But, yeah, and road across someone's property. Oh yes, that's right. We've got some friends that have property that. Um, it's interesting. We went to visit them. I remember the first time we went to visit them and like the road to access their property literally went right through someone's yard. And that someone had a gate on the, on both edges of their property on that road. And it was locked like they would lock the gates. And so our friends had to have some kind of a communication system or they had to have keys so they could get through this neighbor's property. I don't know if the gate was locked. I think Didn't they just have to get out and open the gate and then close it behind them or something like that? Maybe that was the deal. I thought, there, yeah. I thought it was locked sometimes and they had to have a key or something. I anyway, don't remember. anyway, it was a little bit unnerving to them yeah. and understandably to anybody until you get used to it and because you're going through somebody's yard and opening their gate and all of that. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, these are all interesting access issues that you can run into and uh, could be, a, like I said earlier, could be a blessing or a curse. And uh, yeah, so like we said, just kind of capping it off, um, things to consider are what kind of a vehicle you're going to have and uh, four, -wheel, four drive. wheel drive with good clearance is advisable. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really, really helpful. And having good, tough tires, if, if the road is really rocky, has big, sharp rocks and things like that, then having some some tires that are really sturdy and can hold up to rocks is really good because you can end up with flats a lot. I remember we, were, we got a set of tires for our car that it, they were awful. I can't I tell so you many how many times we had to get those tires patched. And it wasn't nails, it was rocks. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the rockiest road in the world. We don't. But they were just awful, and we couldn't wait to wear them out. And so uh, you want to you want to get tires that are really really tough and you know good at resisting punctures and and that sort of thing is going to be helpful. And, uh, and then having a <clears throat> snowmobile or a side by side, if you have a road that does have you know, bad access issues. Having a backup is really, really important. I know for us, having, you know, having that, having a side by side so we could get in and out um, has really made a difference, especially in the really bad mud season in the spring. Then we can park our car out at the end of the road in the little cleared area, park, <laughs> parking lot, <laughs> um, and then just ride the Ranger in and out. Um, and that makes it a lot more feasible. Um, Relieves a lot so, of stress because yeah. then you don't feel like you have to make your vehicle do <clears throat> the impossible. And, and and with the winter, you know, if, if, yeah. if you're dealing with lots of snow, it's it can give you some peace of mind to have some sort of a vehicle that can go on top of the snow so that if for whatever yeah. reason you couldn't read, keep your road open, you've got a way to at least be able to get in and out. So that's nice. We haven't always had that. Yep. And Lisa can tell you, I've <laughs> stressed a little bit <laughs> at the end of some heavy winters, hoping I could keep our road open <laughs> and wishing that we had a snowmobile <laughs> as a backup. Um, so, you know, if if push comes to shove, you can always park out and ski in and out. We've known neighbors that have done that. Yep. Um, I've biked in and out a time or two. In mud season. In mud season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's options. <clears throat> it keeps you young. <clears throat> mm -hmm. and, and as far as access issues, another thing that's really helpful is some home-baked breads to share with your neighbors and create goodwill. <laughs> because <laughs> I tell you what, the neighbors, helping neighbors can really make a big difference. And I know for us here in our little neighborhood, that has really made a difference. So, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a huge blessing to have neighbors that you're friendly with and have a good relationship with and can help each other out. Because when you're in a rural area, it's um, you know help 
could be professional help could be a long ways away. Yes. And so, so being able to call somebody because you had a battery die or because you got stuck in the snow or, or in the mud. Medical emergency yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyhow, so that's that's all we got to say about mud. Bad access. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's like I said, it can be fun. and uh, It's an adventure. That's right. So hope that was helpful and hope your road isn't too bad. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.